The Knights Who Say Na, Tomoe Gozen, Episode 4, Ashigaru. Inside Nico's apartment, Nico, Chie, Junko, and Moe are huddled around Nico's dining room table. The overhead light casts conspiratorial shadows over a crude schematic drawn on pieces of printed paper. They're scotch taped together to reveal a floor plan. Rectangles with names like Office 1 and Bathroom and Staircase. Nico points to the president's office and a small indicator that says secret door. There's a small clock and it just opened here. But what if it's not open? I have a clover. Secret doors don't open with clovers. And you know because you've tried opening secret doors before? Tomoe can open it. They look to Tomoe who still wears that blood-stained armor. She looks back at them with determination and nods. The sword is in there. I saw it. Behind a glass case. Okay, what? So we just have to find a way to sneak all of us into the building, wearing the uniforms of the company that nobody works for. Then we have to get security clearance to the top floor, where we have to sneak past security, avoid the cameras and the elevators, and eventually break into the office and through a secret door? They all take a beat to appreciate the incredulous look splayed across Junko's face. Nico said it was behind the glass too, so... We gotta break that. And then we have to break the glass. Then we'll do it. They all look to Nico with her newfound confidence and leadership. We are strong enough to do it. Tomoe walks over to the schematic and points down to the secret room in the president's office. I can see these pieces of me and these pieces of my life now. I can feel it. If my sword is there, then I know I can be me again. I know my Ashigaru are waiting for me. Her eyes well with tears, and the four other women standing around the table collectively sniffle. Are we all going to help her or not? Chie pulls another bottle cap with her teeth and thrusts her beer up in the air. Yes! Nico puts her bottle up and clanks it. Yes! They look to Moe, who raises her bottle in the air. Yes! All eyes fall on Junko, who sighs, snatches her beer from the table, and clanks it against the other bottles. Yes. Okay, Junko. We need to get these uniforms ready. The next night, in Junko's seamstress shop, Tomoe, Nico, Chie, and Moe are all lined up against the wall as Junko takes their measurements. She runs the tape from Chie's armpit to her wrist, and Chie giggles. Ticklish. It's not funny. I'm not laughing. I could get arrested. I'm not laughing. Junko goes to measure again, and Chie giggles again. They all give up and drop their arms. Later that night, Junko is about to chew a hole through her bottom lip as she works through the patterns to sew the perfect imposter uniforms, Fire Engine Red. She finishes the final flourishes with a name tag and holds it up proudly as the sun starts to rise and shines a golden light through the far window. Chie, you can make magnetic ID cards at your school. The vice principal has one in her office and she loves me. Inside Chie's high school, the bell signals a stampede of uniformed students barreling into the hallway. Chie pops her head out of her classroom and moves against the current, slaloming between students before ducking into the vice principal's office. She waves to the vice principal, who looks at her skeptically and ducks into an administrative cubicle. Chie pulls the magnetic card reader closer to her body, but gets the sneaking suspicion that somebody is watching. She pokes her head above the cubicle wall and finds the vice principal staring right at her. What? What? I'm doing stuff. You're always doing stuff. It's called having a job. What does a vice principal even do? Chie rolls her eyes and ducks back down for cover. She rifles through her purse and pulls out the Ares International ID card. One deep breath, then swipes it. The information goes onto the computer, and she starts magnetizing five more cards before tucking them back into her purse. She moves past the vice principal and makes a face at her before slamming the door shut. Moe, you can make the card look legit, I guess. In Moe's apartment, her space is punk rock. Sid and Nancy, the Ramones and CBGB posters line the walls. There's an electric guitar on the bed. She has Tomoe, Nico, Junko, and Chie lined up against a white wall. Moe snaps a picture of each, and then we follow Moe to her custom print shop. Moe works on Photoshop to match the Aries International ID card. We watch as she drags the headshots of her accomplices into place and sizes up the perfect font. She prints the translucent stickers and carefully places them on their counterfeit ID cards. It's a perfect match. Once we have everything in place, I will go test it and make sure that it all works. At Nico's apartment, Tomoe goes and performs her martial arts forms as Nico, Chie, Junko, and Moe follow along with their newfound teacher. They have transformed into a cohesive unit. The next day at Aries International Headquarters, Nico stands outside the main pillar of the building and peeks around the corner at the massive glass entryway. 
Two of the security guards, Blondie and Scarface, stand sentry with war wounds on their faces, black eyes, scratches, and swollen lips, courtesy of Tomo Gozen. A white Rolls Royce pulls to the curb. She watches curiously as Blondie and Scarface hustle to the door and block her view as they escort a man into the building. Nico taps her foot against the asphalt, impatiently waiting. Then, a black van pulls up to the curb, with Aoki Cleaning Services painted in block white letters on the side. Five workers pour out and reveal that they're wearing the exact same bright red uniform as Nico. They unload supplies, and just as they turn to head into the building, Nico makes her move. She scurries forward, surreptitiously bouncing from hiding spot to hiding spot until she manages to sneak into the back of the group as they move inside the building. She makes it into the security lobby. This is the real moment of truth. One by one, Tomoe watches as the employees of Aoki Cleaning Service swipe their ID cards. The light flashes green, and the turnstile activates to let them through. Five, four, three, two, one. It's Nico's turn. She holds her breath, trying to calm the small tremors in her hand. She extends the card down and clanks it a few times against the card reader before swiping the magnetic strip through. The millisecond feels like a century as she waits for the light. It eventually turns green. Relieved, Nico pushes herself through the turnstile. A smile crawls across her face until she hears a voice. Who are you? The question jolts her back into a moment of panic. Her cheeks flush red as she wheels around to face... Haru the foreman. He's gaunt with sharp eyes, and they're aimed at Nico with a dose of skepticism. Excuse me? I asked who you are. Nico hesitates. Then, as if in slow motion, she points to the name sewed on her uniform. I'm Sarah. You're not on my list today. I'm sorry. I was supposed to start last week, after we just received the account. Who hired you? Nico racks her brain and flashes back to the moment she overheard the other day on the street. Hiroto! It was Hiroto who hired me. I used to work for Sato Cleaning. Sato's done. We'll have their last couple of accounts by next week, and the woman running it will be working for us also. What's her name? Nico. Nico is going to be working for us. Nico's face goes from red with embarrassment to purple with rage. She's about to explode. You go with them and start at the 30th floor. He ushers Nico into the elevator, presses the button, and looks at her for a beat as the doors shut between them. Nico waits one moment and quickly presses the 44 button. The doors slide open at 30, but Nico doesn't move. They shut, and she anxiously awaits the next ding. She arrives at the 44th floor. Nico steps out into the familiar hallway. She is so out of place and doesn't even realize it as she pads past the office doors that she used to clean. She spots the president's office at the end of the hallway and is about to quicken her pace when she hears a click. The door next to her swings open and she comes face to face with Tanaka, the man who fired her only a week ago. His face immediately contorts in an attempt to process what he's seeing. Excuse me, do I know you? No, sir. I just started with Aoki and I'm looking for my team. You're on the wrong floor. This is the executive level, and the cleaning here is tomorrow. Right. I'm so sorry. Nico awkwardly turns and starts to shuffle back toward the elevator. She can't get away fast enough. And then... Wait. Nico stops, slowly turns. Everything inside her tells her to run. Tanaka takes a couple steps toward her, and then bows gently. I am Tanaka. I supervise the hiring of outside companies. I'm Nico. His eyes narrow as she turns and continues toward the elevator door, clueless to the fact that she just said her real name. That night, in Nico's apartment, Nico bursts through the door. She is all excitement. It works! The card works! It all works! Her voice fades out as she processes the tableau in front of her. Sakura is standing over her group of friends with a scowl splayed across her face. What works, Mom? Nico's eyes scan the room in a bit of a panic as the predicament washes over her. Listen! No, Mom! You need to listen to me right now! Stop this! You don't understand. I do! I completely understand! We told her everything, Nico. Yes, they told me that you're basically going insane. You believe that she's Tomoe Gozen! Sakura's finger points to Tomoe loaded with accusation. They told me that you are doing something crazy illegal, and I'm pretty sure you'll get arrested for it. I'm doing what's right. No, no you're not. You're doing what's insane. Tomo has been helping me, and now I have a chance to really help her. She's not helping you. She's letting you do this because of what? Why? Because she's good at cleaning? Sakura, like you actually thought I was going to help with this or something. You had Junko make me a uniform, and Moe used an Instagram picture of me to make a fake ID card. 
It worked though, right? Moe, stop. Sorry. Mom, I will get kicked out of school if I did this. I love you, but I won't let you break into a building and steal. I'm not going to let you. Tomoe steps next to Nico and takes her hand into her own. Your mom is a shigaru now. What? What does that even mean? It means she's basically like an ancient warrior. A samurai warrior. An ancient samurai warrior. Sakura looks like she's about to lose it. Daughter, listen to me. This life, our life, I knew it all. I really did. I had it planned out from the moment I met your father. And it was like I was the writer of my own little show. I worked hard. I felt stressed. But I loved Riku. I had you. Mom. No, it's true. I wasn't strong enough. I've never felt strong enough. I was just, it's like I'm broken. I'm broken and I've got bits of tape all over, just holding me together. But it's not working. Nico wipes a tear away from her cheek and pulls herself straight. You are going to be an amazing doctor. You are going to contribute to this world. I don't know what I am right now, but there's some little piece of me screaming to do this. And I'm just listening. So I'm doing this for Tomoe, but I'm also doing it for me. Tears fall freely down Sakura's cheeks, but she doesn't move to embrace her mom. I won't stay here for it. She pulls her backpack off the coffee table, moves past her mother who does nothing to stop her, and slams the door shut. Nico collects herself, exhales, and looks to her friends in the living room. Ashigaru. They all stand and circle up around the table, eyes flitting between each other. We do this tomorrow night.